Hey guys, welcome back to Eileen's World and the next stop of my world tour, Istanbul. If you're planning a trip to Istanbul soon and want to see how I spent three days exploring the city, then make sure you just keep on watching. We landed in Istanbul airport and if you're from the US, you will need a visa. For $50, you can apply for the visa online and download it straight to your phone. I applied for mine the day before my trip and received it within a couple of minutes. It's hassle-free and it's super convenient. Regarding cash, we exchanged our cash uh, into Turkish Lira's once we arrived into the city center. Credit card is widely accepted in Istanbul and cash will be most useful for street vendors and small shops and restaurants. We can use Uber in Istanbul. So we just got our Uber and it's located on the second floor. And I'll give you a number where they're gonna pick you up. So ours is going to be pick up point six. We are room 54. Luckily they have an elevator in here. All right, hostel life. So you're gonna walk in and here are our bunk beds. It's the sink area. There's the light. There's our sink. We're going to turn back around. <laughs> and shower. Looks good. And toilet. Is here. I'm going to step out. And then there's lockers that we can use. Is that you can put your own code in there, which is great because it acts like a closet. I'm pretty impressed. We have a hair dryer, there's like a soap dispenser here. We even get some shower gel, shampoo, conditioner, and then lots of outlets, oh, which you can't see, but you even have this here, which is like a reading light. Hall time. We found a corner market that is literally a minute away and it's open. Accepts credit card, win win. We got a whole case of water, a bag of ketchup ruffles, a can of Pringles, and a liter of Coke Zero for $7. So we feel like the price is right. We came a little late for breakfast, so they need to replenish the stash. Usual honey, marmalade, Nutella. We got olives. That looks sweet. This just came out. And Jose said this is good. Good morning. Day one in Istanbul. Uh, we just came back from our breakfast, which was up on the rooftop, and it's like full of people. It's super lively. Definitely if you want to be a social butterfly, this is the spot for you. Here is the view. Today's a little bit cloudy. It was raining when we woke up. I had some boba cravings that needed to be satisfied, so we walked over to Monster Tea Shop to see how the boba and turkey compares to boba back home. We got a large brown sugar for 35 Turkish Liras, and I got the banana milk tea. And there's a cat with no name. This is the banana milk tea and it's made from a house-made banana puree, boba, and a choice of milk. And I think it's just regular, regular milk. It's pretty good. I've been refueled by boba and we've made our way to Dolmabache Palace, which is closed today. So you can still come, take your photos, sit by a cafe, by the water. Isn't this beautiful? So I believe this was once a palace, but now it's a museum that has art, calligraphy, carpets, according to Google. <laughs> Here we are at the Grand Mosque. It only took us 40 minutes to walk here, but it's a straight, easy, half all the way down along the water. 
And there you see the bridge, the phosphorus bridge. So we're going to learn for tomorrow that if we're going to go into the mosque, make sure you are dressed properly. Not like me, but it's beautiful on the outside. And in the neighborhoods or the streets right around the uh, Grand Mosque, there's all these little shops. If you want to buy your souvenirs, your evil eyes, Barbie. And we got a kumpir, which is a baked potato with, oh my god. So he put cheese, butter, salt, and he blended it. And then he added all these toppings. So we have sausage, mayo, corn, olives, red cabbage. This looks so good. Look at that view of the bridge. You can partially see the great mosques too. The mango colada is here. Wow. So much detail. It's done with love. Mmm. It's nice. If you're like me and you didn't know that Istanbul was built on a hill well now you know it's built on a hill and you're going to be doing a lot of this very San Francisco-esque oh look we made it right in front of our faces <laughs> let's see if we can go up oh my knees but do my knees can my knees go up all right, so I just got tickets, two tickets to go up the Galata Tower, and this line is long. And then there's another line to go up the tower. So let's find Jose, because he was standing in line while I went to go buy the tickets. Maybe he's up front now, let's see. So we made it up to the tippity tippity top top. And if you want to get outside and get some air and get some photos, this is what this is what you gotta deal with. Look at this. You got the crowds, but you have a beautiful view. I think it's popping right now because it's sunset. And on the other floors, you can find bits and pieces of history if you care to read. Most people, I think they just come here to, for the rooftop and to get that 360 panoramic view of the city. On our way back to our hostel, we need a dinner, so we're at Durumzad. It's good enough for Anthony Bourdain. It's good enough for us. Keep in mind, there's limited seating. Here are our meat selection. I got the chicken. I think that's the one Jose got, the lamb and beef. Table finally freed up. And we got our wraps. Mine is a chicken wrap. I know you can't see it right now. I'll just have to taste it for you. Ah! She's tasty. Good morning, or should I say, Merhaba. It's day two in Istanbul. It's almost one o'clock. Today I'm getting a very late start because I, I'm i ill. We were mainly in the newer city yesterday, so today it's gonna be like the older city, the more famous mosque, and the Grand Bazaar. See you there. All right, we're here. We're at the very end or beginning, depending on how you see it, of the Galata Bridge. So we're gonna cross on over to the other side uh, so that we can go to the Blue Mosque, the Grand Bazaar, the Hagia Sophia. Uh, we took a taxi ride. It was about $4 and we just found some the closest hotel as a drop-off point so that we can head on over. So let's go, follow me. We gotta cross under to get to the other side. 
and it's full of shops. Oh look, Turkish Delight. You want sunglasses, you want jewelry, you want toys, you want watches. Ooh, you want Gucci scarves. Burberry scarves. Look guys, we made it. We made it to the Hagia Sophia Mosque, Grand Mosque. And this is the line. I mean, it's long, but what are you gonna do? Come to Istanbul and not go inside? I think not. I got an orange juice. I'm gonna get one of their bread things from the man of the cart and we'll wait it out. All right, well, since we're gonna be in line for God knows how long, we got a little snack. I got a cinnamon one and a sesame one. <laughs> Excuse me. This was 20 lira, so it's a dollar for two of these. Let's see how they taste. It's been 15 minutes and the line is moving. And also feedback on those two bread pastry things that I got. They were not good. They were dry. They were tasteless. We're making our way in. Buy a headscarf for uh, 10 liras, which is 50 cents, once you enter through security and into the Hagia Sophia. We put our shoes in our little cubbies, barefoot. So in 2020, the president of Turkey decided to turn Hagia Sophia back into a mosque because prior to that it was a museum for some time. And once you're done visiting the inside of the mosque, you can also visit the tombs of the sultans outside. So my piece of advice is don't be intimidated by the line that you see outside of the museum. Today is Tuesday. We, we started our date really late, so it's not like we were, we were even trying to get there early. And the line, I mean, it looks long, but it, it, within 15 minutes we were able to get in. And just a hop and a skip away is the Blue Mosque. Wow, what a difference. Look at this. There's no line. No line to get in. I've got my head covering on. Fortunately, it's like under construction, so it doesn't look very nice right now but let's go inside and see well it's a bummer that the blue mosque is under renovation i mean it's still a functioning real mosque so there's people in there praying but you don't see anything you see the dome the dome is really pretty but aside from that what do you see I, I, you see I, scaffolding. <laughs> it's time for some lunch or an early dinner since I didn't eat much today except for the pastries that I got from that street vendor which was not good. So we're at McDonald's now and I ordered a Dabba Dabba burger. It was probably the only thing on the menu that wasn't like a McChicken or a regular burger so I wanted to try that. It's always fun trying McDonald's in a different country. Even though people are like, don't eat McDonald's or Burger King or whatever. We got my Dabba Dabba. Okay, so it looks like Jose ordered a Fanta, a Coke, fries, a Dabba Dabba, a quarter pounder, and some ketchup. Okay, here is our Dabba Dabba burger. It has your typical sesame bun. It has mayo and a tomato cheese. And it looks like this is a chicken patty. The outside just has like a light fry coating versus like a McChicken that's a little more crispy. For 29 liras, we got a tiramisu and for me a latte. This is a pretty good tiramisu for less than a dollar fifty with a latte. We made it to the Grand Bazaar. 
But I mean, all these streets surrounding kind of feel like a bazaar because everyone's selling so many things. Is this a little baby Sultan? That's funny. There are a lot of jewelry shops, uh, Turkish delight sweets, a lot of knockoff designer um, shops too. You want your Louis, you want your Balenciaga, you want your Hermes. They got it all here. They even have some new styles. Like they even look like, you know, nice stores. You can go left, you can go right, you can go straight. Hello. And there's just shops everywhere. Look. Here are the handful of reasons if you want to come to the Grand Bazaar. Well, one, to experience it. It's pretty cool. Two, if you want to buy some designer goods, whether it's baby Gucci for your baby, or you need a new Chanel bag, or you need a Dior bag, or your man needs an Hermes belt, or you need a Cartier bracelet, uh, they come here. If you need, uh, what else? Turkish delight, come here. If you need Turkish jewelry, come here. Uh, oh, if you also want Nikes and Yeezys and Jordans, come here. And there's the Galata Tower, which we went to last night, and we're able, to, I think around this time too, and we're able to see the whole panoramic view of the city. Former prison, by the way. So that's the Galata Bridge that we need to cross over, but there's like a lower level, and if it's during sunset, this is a great place to take photos, because you can actually go to see both sides of the bridge and get um, good photo ops there. I ordered a Turkish tea. I also ordered a Turkish coffee, which comes with a little Turkish delight. And water? I'm confused. Am I supposed to put this in here? And then two pieces of uh, walnut baklava. Oh, it's so sweet. I see. My teeth hurt. Just did some research on the Googler, and it says that Turkish coffee is always served with water to cleanse your palate. You also don't stir it because it's going to disturb the grounds. <laughs> it's like thick like hot chocolate without being sweet like hot chocolate. We got my house made lemonade and a strawberry cake. You can sit on the outside or you can go all the way up to the rooftop and have a beautiful view of the Bosphorus Strait, the Hagia Sophia, the Blue Mosque. And then on the other side, you see the Bosphorus Bridge. Six out of five, great views, good prices, good pastry must go. We just got through security, headed over now to go buy our tickets. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that everywhere you go, whether it's a mall or a grand bazaar or a place like this, you have to go through metal detectors everywhere, everywhere you go. This is the line. They do separate between Turks and foreigners. Okay, stood in line for about 15 minutes and got our tickets. Uh, we got the one that gives us access to the Topkapi Palace, the Monument Museum, and the Harem as well. And now we're in line to get our free audio guide that comes with these tickets. 
So in order to redeem your free audio guide, you need to leave um, a passport or an ID as a deposit, which I don't have. Um, if you don't, you can leave 100 euros or $100 cash. Yes, I said next. Next. He said next. We found a little area with a good view for pictures. Overall thoughts, it was worth the 20-ish dollars to get in. The grounds are really well maintained. Make sure you give yourself more than two hours because there's a lot to look at. And the audio guides that are free, um, they are very helpful, don't you think? Yes, they are. They're great. great. So yeah, just give yourself a couple hours here because we were here for two and a half and it wasn't enough. Okay, on our way to our cruise, we found Bambi Cafe. It's kind of cute. And we can get our... Um, meat roll to go okay we got our food on the go we got a meat roll a large one which was 75 dirhams and we got an islak burger which is a burger patty inside two buns but the bottom bun is like kind of soaked in like a tomato sauce it's pretty good it was tin the spot right now because we're hungry we out here in Karakoy Pier Forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. But we found our person, tour company guy, and he's gonna have us wait over here for now. It's dry. Right. <clears throat> right. If you look on the inside, we have beef, we have some french fries and some tomato. I booked this sunset cruise on a luxury yacht through TripAdvisor for $47 per person. We had a live English guide along with welcome drinks, snacks, and dessert, which was a nice touch. The guide did a great job explaining the significance of all the buildings we saw along the water. This city must be experienced from the water and taking this cruise during the sunset was perfect because we got to see it during the day and the night. If you're gonna go, make sure you bring a jacket because it does get cold as the sun goes down. The entire trip was over two hours and totally worth the money. Galataport is a modern shopping complex not too far from the pier. It's right on the water so you get beautiful views along with lots of shopping and dining options. finished our sunset cruise on a luxury yacht going up and down the Bosphorus Split, right? <laughs> Bosphorus Strait. And now we're at Mesa Luna for some dinner. I've never had an espresso martini before. This might be the world's fastest service. We just ordered, like what, not even five minutes ago and the food is here. So we got the parpadelli with mushrooms and cheese and a chicken milanese, milanesa. Mm. The pasta and the drink was really good, but the milanesa was a little bland. There are so many different restaurant options in Galataport, so make sure you have dinner here at least one time during your trip. And that wraps up my three days in Istanbul. As always, if you have any questions about visiting the city, please let me know down in the comments below. Thank you, or should I say, Teşekkürler, so much for watching and follow me on Instagram. See you guys in the next stop of my world tour.